Hello, everybody. Yeah. Oh, that was mine. I don't know okay. how to turn it off. So <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, okay. How do I do not disturb? I thought I had that on. Weird. Anyway. Um. Hi, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're doing great. The minutes are in the chat. I see Matt just put them in there. So if you want to just let us know how your day is going, um, that'd be great. And it's apparently kind of a complicated question. I didn't realize, but it, it can come with some feels. So yeah. Okay, let's uh, jump into the agenda. I'm super happy. If you all did not see in Slack, you can now only subscribe to the DEI meetings if you would like to do so. You don't have to subscribe to all jillion chaos meetings. You can just describe or subscribe to the DEI one. Um, you can also subscribe to all of the chaos meetings if you really want. Um, so there's the file, there's the link. So it's an ICS file. And in Slack is um, a link to a how-to. If you've never done that before, added that to your calendar or subscribe to an external calendar from your calendar, uh, should have some instructions for you there in Slack. Um, I did embed the calendar, the new calendar, oops, into uh, our page here. Let me just close this out. There we go. Um, so it does look better than it did, and you can see everything. Here's all the links to everything. Um, if anybody had subscribed, just a point of note real quick, if anybody had subscribed to the Chaos Community <clears throat> link, or ICS, um, I did separate out the newcomer hangout and the upcoming new Badger orientation meetings. Um, those were confusing people when they subscribed to the community meeting, they just thought that they were getting only the community meeting. So I just put them in other, as you do, you know, that's what I, that's how I solve everything. I just dump all the weird things into an other or a miscellaneous. But I figured people aren't gonna actually wanna subscribe to the newcomer hangout and they can't subscribe to new badgers. So that's just kind of a carry all or catch all for kind of just like the one-offs, if that makes sense. So if you had subscribed and it looks different, that's why. <clears throat> Sean, you have your hand up. I just want to make sure I, I did it right. So I'm use, I use the Google Calendar. And what I what I noticed is when it downloads an ICS file, that's harder to do, but there are some useful instructions that you provide and that I followed. I just right clicked on a particular one and I copied the URL to that calendar. So like if you right click on data science on the lower part under subscribe. And then uh, copy the link address. Okay. Then I would, uh, when I'm in my Google calendar, I would I add a calendar by URL in Google okay. calendar and then it shows up. Did I do it right? Yes, you should. All should right. Be. There is it showed up on my calendar, but I wasn't sure if there was some other foo I was supposed to do. No, I think that's it. Um, I will make two points of or one point that uh, it will take 12 to 24 hours to sync with the chaos calendar. And that's a, a limitation of Outlook, Google, all of those. For whatever reason, it's gonna, there's going to be a lag. That's not something we do not have control over. Um, and then maybe I will add that tip in there, um, Sean, that you just said is to right click to copy the link. If that would that for, probably would be helpful for people. Mm -hmm. For people who use Google Calendar, that's the shizzle. But if I like relied entirely on my Outlook Calendar, I could use ICS. Uh, so it's kind of like whatever people want. Okay, uh, I'll just put about Okay, so perfect. Were you able to just add it? Like if you go into Google Calendar, Sean, yeah, can you just add it as a new calendar? Like there's that option. Yeah, so I did like subscribe uh, to a new count, subscribe to a calendar. Can I do that? So basically, yeah. under yeah, under other calendars. Yeah, I didn't choose. I didn't choose subscribe to another calendar. I just uh, when I click other calendars, there's a plus symbol, and one of the options you get is from URL. Okay. And that's that's where I pasted the ICS link that I got off of our calendar website, and then it showed up on okay. my calendar. And it does seem to function like a subscription. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, See, that's an ICS file. So yeah, so if you were going to add like a, just a public calendar from somewhere, um, then that's how you could do it. Like you can search, you know, like here's a list of the holidays or whatever else. Like there's a bunch of like public calendars. So that's how you would do it. Gotcha. 
And then you can set your own um, notifications and all of that. That's all on y'all. You guys can do whatever you want okay. with that. Okay. So if anybody sees anything weird, let me know. If something's broken, something doesn't look right. Just let me know. So this is kind of like a beta, beta testing stage. So, yeah. Okay, let's go on. Sorry, any other questions, comments, anything else on that before we move on? And the link for the ICS is where? So like if I wanted to add a whole calendar? Uh, you can do all chaos meetings right here. Okay. If you go to the calendar, it's like on the very first one. And you would okay. just right click that, copy it. And just copy that link. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. I think I got all these, but let me know if I mess something up. Oh, I see. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah, you're welcome, Enoch. I had nothing to do with the design of it, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's definitely the best platform, but it's a, good, it's a good platform. Like, it is pretty, pretty clear. And you can, I should also say, you can also change if you don't like how this looks, if you want to change it to like, um, you know, this week, like you just want to see this week, or if you want to do like we do in the newsletter and just see a list, you can see that too. And it also tells you what time zone the meeting is tied to. So if it's going to change with daylight savings or not. So the, and you can also search, I don't, we didn't really talk about that, but um, in the future, if we want to add keywords, like if I want to see if we have like other DEI meetings, yeah. So there we go. Okay, I imported it. It worked. They're, awesome. They're brown on my. <clears throat> they're all brown. On yours? Yeah. Interesting. You can modify that color. I think it gets chosen randomly based on the other colors that are yeah, present in your palette. Okay. Yeah, and for you, it all looks like one calendar. So yes. they all are. So they are. Yes. yes. I was wondering if they would be colorful. Like, okay. Yeah, you would have to subscribe to each one individually, I think, I gotcha. for it to, okay. to preserve that. Okay, different cool. thank you. Okay, let's go on. Um, the new apply for badge button is up, yay. I'm not sure who put this on here. Do we want to go to test it out? Do you want to look? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure whether it should be in the minutes, but just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, According to what you discussed last time, um, if you could just click on the apply for badge. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. That, that that's all. So it could you 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 do your you're not you're not like confused of where to what you're, getting. What you're applying for. Yeah, that's all. And if you go back to that, Elizabeth. Yeah. Does that show up. Yeah, go back. Like if you click on project badging, does that? Yeah, it's like it's consistent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sure. Had to test yes. that. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. That's great. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Lamia and Nelson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. I think that's so much better. Okay. Um, anything else on that before we move on? It seems pretty straightforward. That, that's really great. That looks good. Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on to this one. Let me see if Busayo is here. I do not see her. Okay. So this came up as um, a new, well, I'm not actually sure how we want to do it. It was just something that um, Busayo brought up in a, a badge review is that sometimes uh, conferences are free. And so we don't really have a way to um, pull that out or highlight that it's it's comes under the diversity access it would just be like an a because the, the conference is free but um you know the whole idea of keeping ticket prices affordable for or a free event like i didn't know if we should add that in somewhere if that's like a new thing you know around making access easier i'm not sure what y'all think about it so i told the CIO i would bring it up here and just throw it out to the community and see what y'all think and maybe maybe there's no no change to be needed, um, that, and that's also valid. Maybe at least my first thought was, instead of just calling it diversity access tickets, we call it like, um, like I don't know, like 
diversity inclusion access tickets. I, like it's not tickets, but um, and then we just we just have a way to capture like if it's free, that's a pretty inclusive thing. That's like tickets for everyone kind of thing. Yeah, um, I just don't know if we ever really address the price of the tickets. So go, uh, where, <clears throat> where do you see so, this going in like um, in the application know. or is it in the, do we have a? We don't have anything. Yeah, the only place we mentioned ticket price is diversity access ticket. Sean, you have your hand up. Well, um, there are events that are free, that the tickets are free for, uh, and the ticket's hard to get. So one example I might use is Grace Hopper. It doesn't cost anything, but it's super hard to get the ticket. Now, obviously they're going to do great on uh, that's, this, these scores, but I think there are other competitive entrance events in open source that that even if the tickets are free, ensuring that some are available to support a more diverse participant pool, it might not be entirely a matter of how much it costs, is what I'm saying. <clears throat> hmm. We don't really have to make any decisions on this right like right now. I just wanted to kind of bring it up and just kind of plant that little seed about should we include that yeah. somewhere or not. And I'm thinking Boston too. Like Boston is also free and no registration or anything. But you're right, Sean. Like those rooms fill up super quick. So you know, just because it's free doesn't necessarily mean that you're guaranteed a spot. Yeah. So. It requires a certain degree of uh, assertive personality to ensure you're in the room you want to be in. <laughs> right. But um, then, you know, something like a FOSTEM where it is free and they don't even like register, how would you even, you couldn't set aside. Space. How would they even know? Yeah. Nope. You know. Go to, um, can you go to badging, the, the badging.chaos.community and then go to event badge or apply for event badge. And then just pick like in person event, you know, down at the bottom. Yeah. And so then find, just scroll down to diversity access tickets. So, um, like maybe here, like instead of modifying the metric, just because the metric is really aimed at diversity access tickets. Mm hmm. Like simply here, we could just say the event commits to diversity access tickets or is free for all. Okay, I like that. Let me copy that. Okay, awesome. Is everybody then, okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, and then we might want to change the following questions just a little bit. It would be like, um, if your event is not free, if your event is yeah. not free, if your event is not free. Yeah, I can do that. I like that. What do others think? Is that cool? Do we are we good with that? I think I think yeah, that I'm cool with it. For yeah, I see some thumbs up. Okay, good, awesome. Um, one other thing while we're talking about this, this one adding a new question is not a simple thing. Because it has to like go from it has to go through the bot and the checklist and all the way down. So oh. this will get added when we add more metrics. If that makes sense. Yeah, um, I was almost asking. Um, I had Elizabeth. You were saying we're going to add to be adding more metrics. I wanted to just know is that something you're still working on? 
but I, I think I got the answer while you were making that comment. Yeah, I think uh, we wanted to wait until the new site was up and then make changes, instead of like making changes now in the middle of okay. all the trans transition, if that makes sense. But, but I think we're good to go, um, just in case you're, you're ready, you could let us know when you're ready. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, I will work on that next week and okay. get that started again. Right. Awesome, right. that would be fantastic. Okay, anything else on event badging or project badging or any of this stuff? Okay, cool. So let's go on. Brian, hello. We would love to hear this update that you have. Hello, hello everyone. How are you doing? Good. Uh, yeah, so the, in the last meeting, I think I was supposed to come and explain the whole idea about this, but I got sick and I think maybe Ruth came in. I've missed like two meetings. I hope Ruth maybe explained the whole idea just to confirm. I think Elizabeth, you had asked this. Oh, okay. Okay, sure. So what the update that we have is I've been away for two weeks, I guess, since I was not feeling okay, but I'm back now. And we are meeting with Project Enable, who is going to be, we are wishing that they be one of our partners. They specifically focus with persons with disabilities in Nigeria. They are well established. So we feel like partnering with them will help us reach our focus audience and also maybe get accessible venues for the outreach program that you're planning. So we will be meeting with them probably this week on Friday, if all goes well. I think if Tori could have been here, could have given us that update since she is communicating with them via email. And the other update is we are planning it. We are planning the, the outreach to be the first Saturday of April. So we will, it's still tentative, but we'll be sure to update all of you once we have like a set date for the outreach and everything. So yeah. Those are the updates from our end. That's great. That's really, really great. Thank you so much for those updates. Um, Who has questions? Oh, I, Matt does. Yeah, so Brian, thanks for all of your work here. Um, with respect to kind of like outcomes that could help other people that are thinking about the same things that you're thinking about, do you have thoughts on that? whether it's just a one page guidelines or something. Exactly. So actually that is why we started all this. So for the longest time I've been working on how co different communities can help, how we can I can help different communities include persons with disabilities in their agendas. So I've been doing it with my community. And when I gave a talk at Django Con Africa, Ruth said, hey, I think we, we can't do this for Chaos Africa too. So I was like, okay, let's try it out at Chaos Africa. And now from that, we can now maybe refine what I already have and maybe publish something. Maybe it can be a document. It can be like uh, just a workflow on how different communities can also have this incorporated in their communities if they want to have persons with disabilities on board. So this is something that we are, we are actively working on and also actively seeking ideas. But once we have that outreach done, since we will have actually met with the persons with disabilities, I currently focus in Kenya, but since we'll be doing this in Lagos, it will also help me, uh, okay, it will also help me reach another audience like in West Africa to now try and compare notes. This has been done in East Africa, Kenya, and also doing it in Lagos, Nigeria, which is West Africa. And I'm trying to say, okay, now how can this to be implemented in other communities? Hope that makes sense. I don't know. It definitely makes sense. And I think the reason that I ask is because very recently, I think there have been other folks connected with chaos who are doing similar things in different regions of the world. And it would be nice to kind of share what you've learned with other people. Because I think there were questions that people were having outside of the work that you're doing. Just like, how, <laughs> how, to, how to best approach this? And so that's why I asked about outcomes that could help other people as well. Okay, I'll be sure to share that. Okay, that'd be great. And then 
Elizabeth, I'm thinking like, as Brian produces those, like how we might best, you know, make that available for folks. Um, Cause we don't, I'm wondering if it's like in our documentation somewhere or if it's a blog post, you know what I mean? The standard kind of like do a blog post and then share it out on socials. I'm not sure what the most appropriate way to do that would be. I definitely think it could be a blog post. I also think it could be something a little more permanent on the website. Um, I, I think we would want to think about how to how to share that information, but yeah. um, I feel like that could also go in like with our community survey. You know how we have that like graphic and the like kind of how to mm -hmm. like that's also a resource that doesn't really show up anywhere, but could on the website. So maybe there's a whole section of just like resources for, you know, open source communities. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. I like that. Yeah. Cause I agree with you on the kind of the audit stuff we had done. That's kind of outside of the blog post that has gotten kind of lost. Yeah. Yeah. And I also agree, like, just like, just putting things on the website is not always the like m most uh, like, orderly thing to do because you could just put like everything as a link on a website yeah the content's out there we put it on a website yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> why didn't you find it yeah yeah it can lead to a trash problem real fast <laughs> so just maybe yeah i mean I'm, i know we don't have to have an answer now but just thinking through how we can share that material cool Awesome. Brian, I have a question for you also. Do you see or have you seen um, anything that we can do in chaos to also address some of the issues or barriers, obstacles for folks? Like, is, is there a way we can be more inclusive in chaos that you've seen? Okay, so yes, in I've, I've, I've seen it in chaos and also in other communities, but I think it takes time to really understand, okay, where am I going to place this? You're already dealing with metrics. So I was trying to say maybe, okay, maybe you can have a metric specifically for persons with disabilities, but I guess this is already catered for. So where can you really have this? So it's, uh, it's just a lot of thoughts, but I think once we have this one success in this outreach, get to sit with them, understand, they, are, they understand their challenges, and since they understand how the chaos community work, now I will know where exactly we need to place this and where we can have this on board in chaos community. I hope that makes sense. That's perfect. I would I would love that because I'm sure that there are ways that we can, as a community ourselves, be more inclusive yeah. to uh, folks with with disabilities. We would, yeah, absolutely. So whatever you find, if there's some recommendations we can take um, and implement, that'd be great. We'd love to hear them. Okay, sure, I'll do that. I was looking through, this is a little bit different, but can you click on that chaos calendar tab you have open, Elizabeth? And then just click on chaos. Like, just take, go to the main page. Upper left corner, just click on the... No, yeah, there, yeah. Total upper, yeah. There you go. And so this is the main page. And then actually if you click on about, then about. Oh, that's funny. Mine rendered really funny. And then could you click on documentation, community documentation at the top? That was a little funky. Oh, I added I think this. I can well, take that I th off. Well, and bad. I think Elizabeth's on a small laptop screen, and I think her browser is actually crunched a little bit below the dimensions of a standard web page. So some of the weirdness you're seeing on the screen might just um, be uh, by the small like screen. That, can we, the scroll up. I don't know. It seems like it's getting chopped off a little bit. Yeah, it does actually. This is too, yeah. Like and the about, that was funny. My about, if I click on about. Yeah. 
my um let me share my screen really fast okay this could be a after i just claimed that firefox was great <laughs> this is what my this is what my about looks like oh weird huh. oh so yeah, you, know, in... you, have the, you have the left to right problem so you have somewhere in your cache it, it comes from the, the translations so somewhere in the cache um, okay. it, it's tried to translate to a right to left that's weird okay it happens every now and again randomly and i don't know why i don't okay. know why okay we've looked into i know kevin and i've looked into it both so okay i that was completely off i just as i was looking oh at wow that is weird does yours do it too yeah i'm in safari and i've got that weird behavior mm, okay with all the bullets on the right weird i don't know why it's doing that i'm sure it's that translator plug plugin that we pay eighty dollars a year for <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> If you want one to not mess it up, you're going to have to pay a bit more. <laughs> we're, we're being ransomware by a layout engine. <laughs> Good business model. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll look into that, that a little bit. would be a pretty good ransomware, actually. It just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're 80 bucks if you want it to work right. You don't right. want everything misformatted everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, so weird. Okay, let's go back to the minutes. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, like, if you are just a you know an a, a random person coming to the website, and you don't know that that's what's happening. Like, that's gonna look super bizarre. No, I didn't even know that. Was, like, I'm there all the time. I'm not even a random. Yeah. Person, so I agree. I, I didn't notice it till you pointed it out. So like, I went to the about page while you were talking, I didn't see what you said, saw until you said what you saw. For yeah, what it's it worth. Said, yeah, the navigation <laughs> is the giveaway. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just, it's honestly, it's just that one. It's just that page? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which is even more weird. It's like, just why? the about page. Okay, bizarre. All right, let me put this AI over the See, I, I fixed the calendar finally, and now I got to go after Word, WordPress. I, <laughs> that was, that was <clears throat> terrible. Technology hates me. I don't know why. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> Sorry, Brian, back to yours. Anybody have any other comments, questions, anything, feedback, anything? Okay. Let's go on then to revisiting our spreadsheet. I would venture to guess that Matt put this on there. I, I did. <laughs> so if you could click on that. Yeah, we haven't looked at this in a in a minute. Yeah, a so it's you know we've been kind of asked to to reconsider, not reconsider, but just you know get back to taking a look at metrics and metrics that could be developed in this group. Um, so this is the list. It's just really just kind of getting your your thoughts on where we might want to go next from a metrics perspective. So green are released. There's a little bit of updating I need to do there. Yellow have a <clears throat> in column F. They have usually a a um, Google Doc where we've been doing some work, and then the red ones are. They just kind of were tossed out, you know, by somebody at some point, and that's about it. I'll drop this link in the chat too. Um, I don't think anybody did that yet. The chat went away. Um, if, and if anybody sees anything in here that just really kind of speaks to them, that'd be great. And I mean, some of these we we worked on, and we didn't finish so yeah now are there a couple are there any that might be candidates for like the next round of project badging you know like those kind of reflective metrics that we ask people to talk about whatever it might be I 
I don't think we have talked about documentation in the badging yet. Mm -hmm. So I feel like documentation would be something, whether it's like a combination of these three okay. or, or what, that would just be an idea. Three, even just one, sure, mm -hmm. for the next. Maybe let's let's put that, let's track this while we're here. I mean, so like maybe candidate for like that, you know? Yeah. We did have, for those who don't know, we did have all of those lumped as one metric. And then mm -hmm. we realized like, we're actually trying to measure different things in this metric. So it's kind of more of a model. So they're, you know, individual, we broke them out. So I don't know how we would add that to, um, to the project badging, which one, which one or ones we should add, mm -hmm. but they all kind of have value, so. Um, we do have like in the current badging, you know, we have newcomer experience, which I see right there in row 42. Mm -hmm. um, what are the other three? Project access, uh, communication, transparency, and inclusive leadership, I think. Okay, yeah, inclusive leadership is it. Okay, yeah, I see that. So maybe like, we don't have anything for governance in the current one, like yeah. council diversity. That could be a kind of a funny question though, because not every project has a board yeah. or a council. Yeah. We didn't really mention code of conduct in that first round, which no. is a little uh, off, but. <clears throat> we can't do everything. Yeah. We could do for round two, we could do like code of conduct and code of conduct enforcement. That's something you scroll yeah. up a bit. I saw that somewhere. Yeah, right here. Yeah, 47. We had started it. How far are we? Not, you know, not, not terrible. What template is this? <laughs> It's like no template at all, but we have a lot of stuff in here. Look at that. Jeez. Qualitative, qualitative. So maybe like for version two, we could include something about code of conduct, but it's not just the presence. It's also. Yeah, a little deeper. Yeah. And so maybe to me, like I just put it under code of conduct enforcement for V2 like that row that you were just looking at. Yeah. Like a code of conduct is a pretty simple thing to just add to your project, you know, like but yeah. really actually think about how are we going to enforce this? And like, that's the trickier issue. That's the trickier part. And like, what are we doing to make sure we're enforcing it properly? Mm -hmm. and I really put a lot of thought into it. So I think that that's the, that's the, yeah, I totally agree. I like that a okay. lot. Um, yeah. Cause then maybe we don't even have to, like do anything with respect to, do you even have a code of conduct? I would sort of assume if they're, yeah. well, two things. One, having a DEI.md file, <laughs> I'm guessing they have a code of conduct. Maybe I'm yeah. guessing properly. And then if we ask them about code of conduct enforcement, like it kind of makes them have a code of conduct. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> that's right, agreed. How are you just assuming, yeah, that you have one? Um, there was a comment in the chat as well. Yeah, Lamy says onboarding can be looked at. I like that too. Because it's like a little bit beyond newcomer experience, I think. Um, it's kind of like onboarding. onboarding, yeah. Do we have it though? Do we have a, a thing around that? I don't I don't know. Does anybody see one? We do 29. 29, where are you? Yeah, we just don't really have much. Maybe we have something. We have a... Ooh, Maybe. Uh, Let's see what we got. Looks like I'm winner. Oh, at least we have this part. A description of the metric and what it captures. Hey, okay. it's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> it's practically complete, I think. <laughs> <clears throat>
structured or automated way to welcome new members and include them. Maybe new business. Hmm. Well, that the way that question reads, it's kind of more into new newcomer experience. Well, we could looking at the depth of effort that we have put into this one, we could probably change that question pretty easily <laughs> without <laughs> really upsetting anybody. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, agreed. I wonder when the versions of this was made. So we could maybe, so, I mean, this is great because this is a really great discussion because I think what we did even just in this small conversation is identified potentially onboarding and um, code of conduct enforcement as two metrics to work on. There was a third one too, right? Oh, document. Oh, yeah. But document. we have that one done. We could like, like Lemmy was saying, it kind of goes hand in hand with documentation. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's, yeah, something there. And so those would be, to me, those would be great candidates to work on. You know, not if not today, I could at least like action item get code of conduct enforcement into the proper template. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of organize it a little bit better. Oh, look, last edit was 2022. Oh, that was soon. <laughs> <laughs> recently <laughs> two years ago when was the other one when was the onboarding last edit that one's probably sooner never <laughs> doesn't pop up come on 2021 oh perfect uh, <laughs> yeah and i'm the only one so you can change that question so feel free without <laughs> yeah. awesome so i think these would be great to work on and with the intention of maybe getting them into version two for project badging and um, I don't know, just kind of get us back into the, you know, creating a few metrics around DEI as well. Mm -hmm. Agreed. It's been a while. So. It has. So, and again, we don't have to start those today. We can pick that up next week. I think this is a great place too for people who have not really done any kind of metric development with us to mm -hmm. um, just kind of get a start and a feel for how we do it. Yep. That's great. So maybe next week we'll try that. Yeah, let's do this. Let's put this on the agenda for next week. Sounds good. <clears throat> Oops. Yes. But I mean, we could spend, <clears throat> excuse me, quite a bit of the time even just working through one of them. Yeah, the, you mean next week? Yeah. Mm, yep. Let's do code of conduct enforcement since that one's a little further along. Sure, sounds great. Awesome. Anybody have any questions about these metrics or the metrics spreadsheet or any of that? I know uh, it's been a while since we looked at that. So it might be like the first time people are seeing this actually. <laughs> so does anybody have questions on it? It's kind of where we keep all the, all the ideas for all of the, th all of the groups, all of the things. A list of things we have not yet done, but yeah. aspire to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I think that's about it for today. I don't think we have much else, do we? Anybody have anything that's else they the, want to say? That is the agenda. That was it. All good. I really want my thumbs to do the sparkly is like Georg gets when he does the thumbs up. Right? You should do that. Yeah, I think you have to go to your camera in are you on a Mac? I am. You see that green thing? The, no. Uh, the camera. And just did it I said. Oh what? Oh. <laughs> do you have the choice for reactions? <laughs> I do. No, but Elizabeth, do you? I, I have the choice for reactions. <clears throat> but okay. I don't see a green thing to do my camera. I just see like the, like this kind of reaction. Like you need to go through reactions and then um, you choose hand gestures and then probably download oh. some if you think. I think it's okay. like, uh, yeah. I just clicked on it. Oh well. 
I'm gonna have oh there you go, Sean. Oh Matt, oh you guys oh. Yeah. lasers. Lasers. I have lasers. I don't know how to do lasers with just my hands. Come on. Oh, wow. this is, are we still recording? Yeah. Yeah, actually we are. So <laughs> glad this is in there for posterity. <laughs> for anybody. Know, something happened in March 2024 <laughs> and they went insane. They were trying to make lasers with their yeah. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I'm going to practice. I'm just going to have a Zoom call with myself and just spend like an hour <laughs> practicing. So next time I'll be ready. <laughs> there you go, Sean. You got the laser. Right well, you're doing this in every meeting from here on out, folks. So. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, Matt. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. All right, All everybody. Right. Have a great rest of your day. Go play with the uh, Zoom reaction hand gestures, and we'll all be able to do it next time. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.